Hey Grace Church, my name is Josh. Welcome to the weekly for the week of March 13th. Today we are talking about receiving Jesus on his own terms. So this week, against better judgment, we took on the end of chapter 1 of Mark, all of chapter 2, and the beginning of chapter 3. And the reason is because these are put together on purpose, chronologically, so that we can see something. There's a sequence that is significant. And what we see in this, uh, in, in this montage, I referenced like a, a movie montage, what we see in this is Jesus' rise to fame and his enemies rise to want to kill him. So the reason why there is such opposition to Jesus is because people want him to fit in their boxes. We have the same temptation. We, we want to take Jesus and make him fit to us. And so I, I reference like if you're conservative, Jesus is conservative. If you're liberal, Jesus is liberal. I talked about uh, the politician whose slogan is uh, guns, Jesus, and babies. And we joked about how some of you thought that's great and some of you are offended by that. But that is the temptation inside of us, that whatever we're into, that must be what Jesus is into as well. And in these six stories from Mark 1 to Mark 3, you get to see Jesus uh, engaging people who want him to fit in their box and him resisting every box that comes in front of him. The reason Jesus has to resist the box is because Jesus doesn't conform to us. We conform to him. And I try to tell us that a Jesus that never challenges you is a Jesus that never changes you. So here we go. I want to fly through these six stories really quickly. So story number one, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. The, the principle here is that he can touch the unclean and make them clean. Then he sends the man with leprosy to the religious leaders to prove that he's been healed so he can be reintroduced into society. Now the religious leaders are following him around, which leads to story number two, where he's teaching in a home. Uh, friends bring a guy who's paralyzed, pull the roof of the home off, and drop their paralyzed friend through the roof. And in story number two, he's not just a healer, he can actually forgive sins. He tells this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. And then he challenges the religious leaders and says, to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, I also say, get up and walk. And the paralyzed man gets up and walks. This moves to story number three, where Jesus is walking along and he calls Levi, a tax collector, to become a disciple. The Pharisees hate this because they believe you've got to do good in order to be received by God. This tax collector, who is an enemy of the people of Israel, who steals from the people of Israel, certainly has done nothing to deserve being called to be a disciple. And Jesus calls him to be a disciple, further proving that those who are far from God can be brought near to God because of who Jesus is. So in the fourth story, the religious leaders come to Jesus and talk to him about fasting. And they ask him the question, why don't your disciples fast? And Jesus responds with the question and says, would you fast at a wedding? The answer is, of course not. You would feast at a wedding. And Jesus tells them he is the bridegroom. He is the groom. And this newly instituted people called the church is the bride. This is a crazy claim where Jesus says he is the one that now creates the covenant between the people and God. And he is, he's further solidifying himself as the mediator between God and man. In the fifth story, they come to him again because his disciples are eating from the field on the Sabbath. And they say, you can't eat on the Sabbath. That is against the law. And then Jesus responds, the Sabbath is not the place where you get your true rest. I am the place where you get your true rest. I am actually the Lord of the Sabbath. I'm the one that created the Sabbath. I am the one that instituted true rest. And he keeps going and going and going. It's like a, a sham wow infomercial. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. And in the last story, Religious leaders are in the synagogue. Jesus is there with the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath. And you can almost feel the tension where the religious leaders are like, don't you do it. Do not heal him on the Sabbath. Don't you do it. Jesus calls the man forward, looks at the religious leaders with anger. The Bible says he has anger in his heart when he looks at him. And he says, what's better, to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil? And the answer is to do good. So Jesus takes this man's withered hand and heals him. And the next Bible verse says that they then started to plan how they would kill him. Why do they want to kill Jesus in his rise to fame? Well, the answer is clear. He's confronting them. 
He's challenging them. He's calling them to change and to transform. And then I read to you the quote from C.S. Lewis where, where Lewis concludes that Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord, but you cannot just relegate him to a good moral teacher because a good moral teacher does not act like Jesus acts from Mark chapter 1 to Mark chapter 3. And this is good news for us. Um, there's good news that Jesus can heal us. Jesus can forgive our sins. Jesus invites us to be a disciple. Jesus is the groom of the church. Jesus is our true rest. And Jesus is the doctor that we need because we are sick. And so Grace Church, my hope is that you are responding to who Jesus is, the one that's in the scriptures, not the one that conforms to our image, but the one that we conform to. So with your connect group or the people around you, what if you answered these few questions? Uh, what, which one of these six stories did you find most compelling that, that we just walked through? Uh, what, what do you think of that quote from C.S. Lewis about Jesus either being a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord? Uh, and then if we can be more vulnerable, what if you answered the question, where, where are you tempted to put Jesus in a box that you've created? Uh, and then lastly, could you ask the people around you, uh, where is Jesus challenging you right now in your life? Where, where are you being challenged by this Jesus who is asking you to conform to his image, not for you to conform, for him to conform to your image? Well, I'm so glad you guys got to uh, join in this week. Please come next week as we continue looking at Jesus as he calls his disciples. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.